Booktube. Book welcome back to my channel and welcome to A Closer Book. This is the series where I review three of my recent reads and today we are reviewing a novel, a memoir slash self-help book and a business slash self-help book. So first we'll get to the novel and that is Jodi Picoult's Small Great Things. And this one is not a book that I probably would have picked up because I read a Jodi Picoult book a few years ago that I didn't love. But I got this one from my book swap buddy, Derby, from Derby Lane Reading. And she sent me this because we were doing the book Swapathon, And so I had to read it. And it turned out to be a book that I really enjoyed. The underlying theme in Small Great Things is race and racism and white supremacy in the United States. And that is such a timely topic that I am glad that I read this book when I did because I have it now to add to the framework of that conversation. The main character in Small Great Things is Ruth. She is an African-American labor and delivery nurse. She works in a hospital in Connecticut. And after a routine delivery, she goes to perform the newborn checkup and she notices that there is a problem with the baby's breathing, I think. During the examination, the parents are very upset that this African-American woman is attending to their baby and so they request that she be taken off their baby's case. So Ruth is taken off the case and the next day, Ruth is the only person on shift and the baby develops cardiac arrest and... Ruth is faced with a decision. Does she disobey the parents and the hospital's rule about not touching their baby? Or does she obey the code and the oath that she has taken to save a life? And so based on her decision, there is a court case. The parents sue her. The hospital does not offer her protection, so she loses her job. And the story is about that court case and whether Ruth as an African-American can actually find justice in this country. The story is told from multiple perspectives, so we don't just get Ruth's perspective, we also get the perspective of one of the white supremacist parents, as well as the Caucasian attorney who is charged with taking Ruth's case. The flipping back and forth between perspectives and perception of race causes uh, maybe a shift in the reader's understanding. What is pretty interesting is that the author is, uh, is not African American, the author is Caucasian. And just knowing that this Caucasian author is writing about a racial, racially tense issue, it kind of gives you pause. However, at the back of the novel, there's an extensive author's note where Jodie Picoult explains why she was impressed to write this book. She talks about having uh, having had this desire to write this book several years ago, but not being able to really contribute to the conversation the way she wanted to. But over time, feeling herself impressed to go back and try to write the story. It's a very important discussion to have, considering some of the events that have happened in this country in the recent past, but also considering the history of racism and racial prejudice that has existed in this country and other countries where slavery is a part of our history. So while this is not an own voices read of Ruth's life and some of the issues that African Americans face in this country, you know, you think about how whether or not a white author could fully encapsulate the black experience. But I think Jodi Picoult does a really great job of not just showing the black experience, but also showing some of the difficulties that their white colleagues and white friends and white co-workers and white attorneys have to face. The novel deals with some very timely topics and it does challenge your thinking in reading a book about the black experience that's written by someone who is not connected to the experience in such an intimate way. But if nothing else, the story contained in this novel will form like a framework where we can have the conversation about race and about prejudice and about racism that is constant, it feels like, in this country. I felt like this was a really good point of access into having that conversation. And if nothing else, I give Jodi Picoult kudos for alternating between perspectives and forcing the reader to really look at this topic from outside of their original perspective. And then I read How to Be a Boss by Lily Singh, and she's a YouTuber who goes by the moniker I.I. Superwoman I.I. 
I love watching her videos. I don't watch them all the time because she is crazy and silly. But this book is about her rise to stardom. In this book, she talks about how she started as a depressed kid, making YouTube videos to make herself feel better, and how she connected with her audience by just being authentic, by just being herself by doing the things that she needed to do for herself and making this connection with other people who are also looking for some kind of comedy to just take away some of the drabness from their lives. She shares some of the rules that she followed and how other people can follow them too to pursue their own dreams. The book was a very visually captivating presentation and it shows Lily being all glammed up in these model type um, outfits and model type poses which is a far cry from her persona in her YouTube videos where she puts on uh, makeup to look like a man she's usually dressing up to look like her father or other male figures and there was some kind of a uh, digression from here is the book where she's telling you who she is and yet she's not showing what she did to become who she is. So for me, that was a little off-putting. That here is this opportunity to really showcase who you are and how you have risen based on the persona that you have presented to the world. But you've taken this opportunity and made it about you presenting yourself like a model. So while it was a very visually stunning book, I mean, like every page was like a pull out, like they were meant to be posters that you were going to pull out and put around your room. Now, I don't have that reaction or relationship to Lily Singh, um, so I would never do that. But overall, I really like the message. I like how she stressed the importance of hard work and singularity of focus. She talks about the importance of treating everyone well, regardless of their situation and their own position, that you can still relate to a person as a human and treat them well just based on that humanity. She talks about respecting the game and not expecting to be an overnight success, that there are no overnight successes on YouTube, and that even people who you see with millions of followers and millions of views on their videos, they've spent a lot of time. She talks about all the time that she has invested in becoming where she in becoming who she is and working towards getting to where she is. So the overall message of her book seemed to just be focusing on hard work, singularity of focus, not allowing yourself to be distracted, but doing doing everything that you can to become the thing that you want to be. And I thought that that was a really inspirational message, a really inspirational read coming from someone who is so young and yet so accomplished in her field. And then finally, I read Icarus Deception by Seth Godin. You know I've been on a Seth Godin binge. I've read several of his books this year, and this is just the latest one. The subtitle of this book is How High Can You Fly? And it is based on the mythical story of Icarus, who was a young man who his father uh, put wings on his body, used, used wax to add wings to his torso so he could fly. And he cautioned him, don't go too close to the sun because the sun will melt the wax. And Icarus, being a young man, he, of course, he started to fly. He got all caught up with his flying abilities and he went too close to the sun. So of course, the sun melted the wax. The wings fell off and he fell to his death. So the caution, the moral of the story is, Stay within the perimeter of safety and don't aim too high. And Seth Godin challenges that. He says that idiom that we've always heard, better to be safe than sorry, he thinks in order for you to really get what you want out of life, it's better to be sorry than safe. Try the thing that you want to try, take the risk, and see whether or not you can succeed. Because if you think about the failure, you will also stifle your passion, you'll also stifle your dreams. A lot of the celebrities that we look on as successes have experienced many failures because of their because of the risks that they have taken in their careers and their personal lives. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, but if there is a hope of a reward, why not try it, right? I started off reading a free copy of this book from the library, but I eventually bought my own copy because there is so much in this book that I just want to hold on to and remember. On every page, there's an inspirational story or quote or analysis that makes me want to just go back and reread and keep this book close by for inspiration. The thing that I like about Seth Godin's books is that he doesn't just talk about using this in a corporate setting, but also how, this, how these lessons can be applied to the creative person, the creative spirit the person who is an artist and who wants to make art and feels like they should not 
put out art because it's not perfect and on the back he has on the back there is a really great write-up which talks about art and he says art is frightening it's not pretty it's not a painting it isn't something you hang on the wall art is what you do when you're truly alive let me know if you've read this or any other of Seth Godin's books I have two more of his books on my radar for the rest of this year and I'd love to chat about them if you've read them so that's it that's a closer book at these three recent reads let me know in the comments if you've read any of them or want to chat about them so thanks for watching this video subscribe if you haven't already and until next time happy reading bye